Computing impacts on the world. Computing has not only changed the way we communicate, the use of computers has changed almost everything about how we interact with our world, including the way we learn, the way we do business, collection of and access to information, the extensive ways we can connect to others, and our privacy and footprint in the world. With wider access to smaller, faster, more efficient, and less expensive technology, human knowledge and capacity has surged. Not only have consumers' lives been changed, we've been able to make advancements across many industries. How has computing impacted these industries? Healthcare, education, agriculture, manufacturing, and government. Here are some ways computing has changed healthcare. Digital medical records mean that you can access your health information anytime and from anywhere, even your cell phone. Digital medical records also make it easy for your doctors to share information about your medical history. The ability to send messages and emails to your healthcare providers has improved patient-doctor communication. For patients with ongoing health issues, small devices can be worn and monitored remotely by doctors to monitor things like heart rate, blood sugar levels, blood pressure, etc. On a larger scale, medical trials and new medical innovations can be developed more quickly because doctors are able to quickly communicate. Aside from keeping attendance and grade records electronically, computing and the use of the internet has drastically changed the landscape of education. The statistics in K-12 online education are not certain, but according to Evergreen Education Group, between 2003 and 2014, the number of students in kindergarten to 12th grade taking at least one online class has increased from 317,000 to 2.7 million. According to educationdata.org, in 2017, about one-third of college undergraduate students were taking some or all of their classes online. 19.5% took some, but not all, classes online, and 13.3% enrolled only in online classes. Computing has allowed farmers to see higher yields from their land. By using machinery, farmers are able to farm larger tracts of land using fewer people. Technology has improved communication among farmers, specifically around livestock breeding and crop genetics and pest control. Another impact of technology, which is not necessarily proven to be good for the environment, is the increase of monoculture farming, where one crop is planted on large plots. While this increases crop yield, this practice depletes soil of nutrients and increases the likelihood of an entire field being destroyed by pests. Almost no sector has been as impacted by computing as manufacturing. In the mid-1980s, robotics began to infiltrate the manufacturing process. While initially there was a lot of fear about robots replacing human workers, what has actually occurred has been largely positive. Generally, robots have taken over jobs that were dangerous or repetitive, which has left more complex jobs for human workers. There's a lot of debate about how artificial intelligence will fuel a new wave of changes in manufacturing. Government has been impacted in many ways by computing. In some cases, computing has made government better. Some of the positive impacts of computing include increased access to voting by mail, increased accountability for elected officials due to online streaming of legislative sessions, and easier lines of communication between citizens and elected officials. Computers are learning as well. A phrase known as machine learning describes how machines are being developed to learn with experience. This means that based on environmental conditions, Machines can learn and improve. The environmental conditions that a machine learns are stored as data, which the system then uses to inform its future decisions. Machine learning is considered to be a subfield of artificial intelligence. Smart home devices like Siri show us how machine learning works. Siri is capable of adapting to users' voices, common inflection, 
intonation, and accents. Based on this information, Siri is able to function as it's designed, process, and respond to human speech. A self-learning thermostat has been developed and shows us an application of machine learning. This thermostat must be adjusted by the household owner for the first few weeks of use by adjusting the temperature at different points throughout the day. The thermostat is then designed to optimize the household temperature for greatest efficiency based on the human patterns of use in the house. There's a lot of data in this world that we need to send, receive, modify, and visualize. Gathering, manipulating, and storing data are challenges that increase as computing becomes more and more essential to many industries. Let's take a look at these key fundamentals when working with data. Whether it's human data or computer data, data can be collected from a variety of sources like surveys, sensors, websites, search engines, bank accounts, shopping receipts, or historical records. There are guiding principles and software that provide a vast amount of data. Labeling a website, article, or piece of software in any of the following categories will offer a great amount of access to new information. Copyrights under the Digital Millennium Copyright Act open access, creative commons, open source, and machine learning technology. Digital content such as applications, websites, blogs, vlogs, and image and video content can be protected under an amendment made to the Copyright Act known as the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Digital Millennium Copyright Act is a U.S. copyright law that was passed in 1998. This law seeks to strike a balance between making information available online to users while also protecting those who own copyrighted material. It is intended to ensure that materials with copyright, also known as intellectual property, are not used illegally on the internet. The DMCA aims to make sure that copyrighted work is protected online, web hosts and internet service providers are provided safe harbor or safety from prosecution provided they do not knowingly allow improper sharing of copyrighted work. How this law works. The U.S. government protects the ownership of those who hold a copyright. Since illegal sharing of copyrighted work often takes place unknown to the internet service provider or web host, the U.S. government has agreed to not hold them liable if they have no knowledge of or financial benefit from the activity on its network, publish a policy that they will not knowingly allow unlawful sharing of copyrighted work, and they agree to take down any material that they are told infringes on copyright ownership. Open access refers to a set of principles that seeks to provide free, online access to informational materials, such as articles or books. In addition to providing direct access, open access allows sharing of digital materials. The goal of open access is to allow unrestricted access to the latest information and research for the greater good. There are many online publishers devoted to ensuring greater access to information and research. Creative Commons is a nonprofit organization that exists to expand the range of creative works available for others to build upon and legally share. This organization has released several copyright licenses known as Creative Commons licenses. When licensing your work under Creative Commons, you give others the right to share, copy, and redistribute your material, adapt or transform your material for any purpose. Provided they appropriately credit you and indicate if changes were made. Similar to Creative Commons, open source software are intended to allow others to build on each other's innovations. Open source materials allow for others to study them, change them, and distribute newly created materials to anyone and for any purpose. When the term open source is used, software is being referenced. Open source software allows access to the source code of the software 
to be used and modified. Open source software are often developed collaboratively and in a public manner. Types of open source software include open source software, open education software, and Google open source projects. If a piece of digital content is labeled open access, there is unrestricted access to use, modify, and distribute the material. If a piece of digital content is licensed under Creative Commons, anyone is able to use, modify, and distribute the newly revised material as long as the original creator is cited. Open source relates specifically to software in that the original source code of the software is available for use and modification. Protection of digital media through a copyright under the Digital Millennium Copyright Act makes it illegal for anyone to modify and use without the proper citation, a copyrighted work. As the capabilities of computing expands, many have found ways to collaborate with people across the world. There are many instances where through collaboration, people have gained insightful, beneficial, and scientific data to help contribute to their works. The collaborative principles listed below are just a few of the ways people have found to share and find like-minded ideas. Cross-industry innovation, open innovation, crowdsourcing, and crowdfunding. With access to vast knowledge at one's fingertips, cross-industry innovation or taking an innovation from one field and applying it to solve a problem in another field has become more commonplace. Some examples of cross-industry innovation include adding entertainment screens to MRI machines to make medical procedures more enjoyable, a new website where people can rent boats was inspired by Airbnb, and BMW's navigation system was inspired by a video game controller. There are many more examples that exist. Open innovation is the intentional practice that promotes sharing of information across groups. Open innovation runs against the common current in business and technology that seeks to keep information secret or only known within one organization. Think of it as being open to sharing and receiving information. Many companies and businesses like to keep new changes to their products or methods secret to their competitors in the hopes of being more successful. Open innovation promotes a frequent give and take of information from both inside and outside a company with the goal being to develop the best possible idea. Crowdsourcing is the practice of obtaining information or ideas from a large group of people. You may hear crowdsourcing referred to as citizen science. Examples of crowdsourcing include businesses asking consumers to share ideas about packaging or branding, universities, scientists, or laboratories reaching out to the public about ideas to solve a problem, companies seeking ideas for innovations, and scientists asking for people to share specific data, like animal sightings or weather data. The Merlin Bird ID app is one specific example of crowdsourcing. Developed by Cornell University, the app leads users through a series of questions to help them identify birds that they see. One question asks for the user's location. When the user finds their bird, they click on a button that says, that's my bird. The app is interesting to users and helps them identify new birds but it also provides valuable information for ornithologists at Cornell about where birds are located. Crowdfunding is a spin-off on crowdsourcing. This is a process that allows people to seek funding for new ideas, projects, and innovations from the general public using sites like GoFundMe, Indiegogo, and Patreon. Crowdfunding has been used to provide startup money, otherwise known as capital, for new businesses, as well as to fund inventions and artistic projects. While each of the sites above has unique terms of service and work a little differently, all crowdfunding sites work in basically the same way. Sites like GoFundMe, Indiegogo, and Patreon provide platforms for people who need money to collect often small amounts from many different people to meet their funding goal. 
Sometimes those who contribute to a cause do so purely as a donation. Other times, the person raising the money offers something in return. For example, startup companies often offer investors a share in the company. This is often in the form of stocks. For those seeking money to fund smaller businesses, which cannot offer stocks, the return for investors might be receiving a product or service from the company once they get up and running. Patreon is a unique crowdfunding site for artists. This platform gives fans a way to directly contribute to the work of artists and creatives that they love. People who contribute on an ongoing basis are usually offered rewards like early releases, contact with the artist, special merchandise, etc. One form of recorded data is a digital footprint. As we navigate the internet, we leave a trail of information about ourselves. These crumbs of information are descriptive enough to trace them back to us and our identity. Your digital footprint is a trail of personally identifiable information that can be used to identify you. Information such as your name, birthday, address, social security number, and financial information would be considered personally identifiable information. PII can be used to identify a person, including their location. When working with and on digital platforms, you should be aware of the footprint you are leaving. It is important to make sure that your digital footprint is not only positive, but also that you're safe about sharing personal information and that you don't give others personal information away without their permission. If data is stored locally on a device, then searching the local disk memory would provide access to the data. Data can also be stored on external or web-based databases or on a separate piece of software. If it is sensitive data that should be accessible by the public, like medical records, the data is encrypted. We will discuss in future topics what encrypted data looks like. Cloud-based data storage entails storing files, images, and other forms of data in a location that's only accessible through a public internet or private network connection. When using cloud-based storage, users are sending their data to an off-site location where physical servers provide storage space. Clouds can exist on both the public internet as well as within a user's private network. Cloud-based storage is an affordable storage option for many because it provides the ability to scale the amount of space being used based on the quantity of data being stored, so users and companies do not need to pay for storage space they do not need. Local data storage requires hard drives or storage area networks that are built to hold a certain capacity of data. Cloud-based storage can be flexible. When cloud-based storage is used, only the space that is required is paid for and made available. Local data storage does provide more privacy and security. Since a network can be created, maintained, and supervised by the organization, outsiders have a much harder time accessing data stored in a local area. With cloud-based storage, data is put into the hands of a third party and is transmitted across the internet. This makes data more susceptible to being intercepted as it is transferred from its origin to its cloud-based storage location. It's important to think about how to keep your PII safe and secure, not just when storing it, but whenever the data is being used. Whether it's through the devices that you use, websites you access, or detection hardware and software that track your movements and location as you drive or visit public places, Knowing how to safeguard your PII is a key responsibility of citizenship in a digital world. When you go to websites or try to log in and see your online cart, what is typically needed? Generally, you have to provide an email and password to most places where you store your personally identifiable information. When you provide only email and password to enter a place holding your PII, you are using a one-step authentication measure to secure your information. An authentication measure is a way in which we are identified in the virtual world. Whether it's an email or username and password or PIN, the virtual space knows how to identify the user based on the information. An email or a username and a strong password is a one-step authentication measure, but there are more. There are a few ways that users can be provided multi-factor authentication measures. Multi-factor authentication measures provide more than one layer of security 
and when the user successfully supplies the correct information, they are allowed access to the virtual space. Multi-factor authentication measures are more secure than one-step authentication measures and help to safeguard against someone other than yourself gaining access to your accounts and PII. Examples of multi-factor authentication methods, in addition to providing a password, are choosing and identifying a security image, recapture identification, identifying pictures with a common image in them, and answering one, two, or three security questions. Strong passwords are another key way of ensuring your data is safe. The stronger the password, the harder it is for your account to be hacked. Some general rules of thumb for creating strong passwords are listed below. Passwords should be at least 8 to 12 characters. Include capitalized letters, include lowercase letters, include numbers and symbols, and avoid including personal identifiable information like your birthday or name, and also don't use words that are in the dictionary. All systems that are capable of connecting across a network have flaws. As a result, software has been created to protect systems from the types of attacks we've discussed and cyber attacks we will discuss. Virus and malware software can prevent infections and fix errors that could compromise a system. Many systems do not come with these types of software, so it's important to research and install this protection. See the list below for a few recommendations of the best protection software. Kapersky Antivirus, AVG Antivirus, Norton 360 Deluxe Malware Protection, and ESET Cybersecurity. Practice Questions